Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto got harem with Kora and Asami, part 2, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Under the arena's pier. Well Kora said getting a chuckle from Naruto before he shushed her before making her follow him, as they launched themselves through an open window. Follow me Naruto said, as the two walked through the halls to see a training ground which the two walked in before an old man walked in. Well I'll be a sight for sore eyes Naruto how are you doing kid? He said slugging Naruto on the shoulder making Naruto chuckle. Kora, this is old man Toza, but I just call him Gramps. He's been trying to get me to be a pro bender for some time now. He even taught me a few things if I ever wanted to entertain the idea, and I'm fine. Toza Kora here is under my watch, and she wanted to see where the magic happened so here we are. Anything happened lately? Naruto said getting a shrug from the old man, while Kora stood there surprised. Wait, you can be a pro bender. She said getting a nod when they heard. They or they heard making them see a youth with short brown hair wearing a red and white padded uniform, with one arm handing on a sling. Don't even try it Bolin you sneaky bastard she's with me. I see you keeping out of trouble Naruto said seeing Bolin. Naruto, do you think you guys can come with me? He said getting a shrug from the two, as Naruto said goodbye to the old man who started to lift weights. What's up Bolin, and did that happen during a match? Naruto asked staring at the bandaged arm getting a nod. Yeah the game is about to start, and my other teammate is close to quitting. We need three benders to play, so maybe you can do me a solid, and help a fellow earth bender out. He begged, as they opened the door to see the arena outside. Bolin. What did I tell you about bringing your rabid fangirls in here get them out of here, and let's get back to the field they heard to see a boy who looked like Bolin, except his hair came to a point slightly with another boy that had long straight hair. Mako for a long time no see keeping out of trouble, and Bolin is injured he can't help without only making his injury worse. He asked me to help out, and Kora is with me to make sure nothing bad happens he said going into the lockers to change his clothes to the pro bending uniform, while placing his hair in a high ponytail. Let's rock then Naruto said standing with the others, as the announcer came from the center of the stage. Introducing the fire fairs. Due to Bolin's recent injury in the last match, he has acquired a substitute to take his place he said, pointing to the red corner, as the three slid out before he stood in front of Naruto. What's your name kid, and why are you here? The man said getting a chuckle from Naruto. My name is Naruto Beifong, and I'm doing this because my friend Bolin asked me to help him out with this. Couldn't necessarily say no to the guy he said rubbing the back of his head, making several women in the crowd cheer for him, and Bolin. Well the fire ferrets have come from nowhere, and are now facing their toughest opponent, yet can they pull it off with Republic City's golden boy, and every teenage girl's dream boy he said, as the two teams got ready before the bell rang, making Naruto swing his arm launching a plate of earth at the person in front of him. Hasak is the first to feel the fire of the Tijudillos, while the two teams try to blast the other out of zone 1. Trying to return the favor, but they're too fast for him, the announcer said watching the match Kora had a large smile. Look at Naruto go like Mako showing his cool under fire personality. Naruto shows his quick wits, and fast thinking striking fear into his opponent the announcer said, as the two boys fired off several things of fire, and earth knocking two of their opponents back to zone 2 like they did to the fire ferrets knocking Hasak, and Mako back to zone 2, leaving Naruto at the front line. Oh my it seems the Tiger Dillo's lead Firebender, and Fire Ferris lead Earthbender are in a stalemate, who will be launched back to zone 2 or go overboard, the suspense is just too much to bear. The announcer said, as Naruto, and the Firebender both launched an attack before knocking into each other, pushing them back. Oh my both Naruto, and the Tijidillo's own Kai were both knocked back into zone 2. Who will advance forward? Who let the judge decide? The announcer said, as they turned their attention to the judge by the board. With Kor. Oh man this is amazing. These fights are so intense. Kora said leaning against the railing staring at the board, as the judge waved to the Tigrillos. What? Oh come on judge or you blind Kai got blasted to the back first. Kora yelled amongst the crowd, as she watched the Tiger Dillos advance into their territory, while Naruto got up dusting himself off. Come on guys. Bullen said before wincing, as Hasak was tossed back to zone 3 before getting tossed overboard. Oh this can't be good, Kora said watching, as Naruto and Mako struggled against the three-pronged attack, as they blocked and dodged two of the three before getting the brunt of the third, pushing them over to zone three, making the buzzer go off for the Tigrillos. Oh man, they need to get their act together otherwise the Tiger Dillos get a ticket to the finals, Bolin said watching, as the match started getting pushed to the second zone, allowing the Tiger Dillos to go to their first zone, before the two cheered, as they laid into them launching them over the edge. The fire fair cinched the round in the closing seconds, bringing the game to one win apiece, but it's still anyone's match, as we go into the final round. The announcer said seeing the two teams start making the two in the fire ferret's booth lean over the railing. Back to the match. Hasak stumbles, and falls onto his teammate Mako. He, and Mako better act quick, or the two are going to take a quick dip. 
the announcer said, as the two struggled to get up before they were both hit by an earth plate launching the two into the water. It's all up to Naruto now to hold on. He's bobbing, he's weaving. He's weaving, and bobbing. But he's not fighting back. He better act quick or the Fire Ferret's fabulous season comes to a close. The announcer said, as Naruto dodged the three attackers, as the two element bender brought up a plate launching it at the water bender knocking him over the edge. It seems the Fire Ferret's plan was to let the Tigrillos punch themselves out, and it seems to be working. The man said, as everyone watched, as Naruto danced around the other two strikes before sending a barrage of plates at the two. Naruto is on the offensive with Han in the pool, as it's two on one. The announcer said, as the crowd watched in amazement before he launched a plate at the firebender making him hit the pole before falling overboard. Scratch that it's one on one, and it's an earth on earth clash. The smoke is rising covering the benders who will come out the winner, and who will be sent home. The announcer said, as Naruto and the other earthbender were in the center sending plates at each other, before the Tigrillo's earthbender was sent to the end of his team side of the field, while Naruto was still in the smoke, before Naruto was seen in the air with a plate flying by his fist, before he fired it aiming at his opponent's legs, and another at his chest pushing him over the edge. I can't believe it folks Naruto Beifong has won the match. What a winged ginger of an upset folks. I can't help but feel sorry for the people who couldn't watch this in person, for it was a once in a lifetime upset. Naruto pulls off the upset, winning the match for the Fire Ferris. The announcer said, as Naruto pulled off his helmet waving to the crowd. With Korra and Bolin. Alright. We just need one more win, and we're in the championship tournament. Bolin said to Korra, as Mako, and has joined them while Naruto walked to the group. So Korra, what do you think of pro bending now that you saw it in action, instead of hearing it from the announcer's mouth? Naruto said before he was pulled into a hug by Korra. It's amazing. I never saw bending like that before I mean I know you're teaching me, and all, but I've never seen anything serious like that before, Kora said getting a chuckle from Naruto, before he was caught in a headlock by Bolin with his good arm. Naruto your lifesaver, if I were a woman I'd kiss you. He said getting a chuckle from Naruto. I appreciate the sentiment, but I'll pass Bolin. It's the least I could since we're friends now can you let go I can smell your armpits, and it smells like you bathed in sewage Naruto said, getting an embarrassed chuckle from the injured earth bender, before they heard Miko and Hasok argue. We won alright, get off my back. Hasok said making Mako glare. He did more harm than good out there Hasok Mako said getting a snort from Hasok who took off his helmet and tossed it to the ground before storming out of the room. I can't believe there's such a style of bending out there and I've been immersed in bending my whole life. Kor said as Mako walked to them. You two are still here. Mako said getting an eye roll from Naruto. And you're still an ass don't see me complaining well not out loud matchstick at least you could say thanks since if it weren't for Bolin being injured and he asked me to cover for him at the last second or I wasn't showing Kor around I can assure you I wouldn't be here Naruto said as he shook his head before turning to Kor and Bolin. How about Bolin thinking we can show her a thing or two about pro bender's style of bending? He said getting a nod. Sure we can show her the basics although I don't see how it will translate to her water bending he said making the two turn to each other before smiling. I wouldn't be too worried I'm actually an earthbender she said, making Bolin stare at her, and her clothes. Sorry I just assumed you know with your water tribe get up, that you're a water tribe gal he said, getting a chuckle from Naruto. She's a water tribe girl she's also a waterbender, and a firebender Naruto said with a grin, making Bolin not confused before looking at the two. Yeah I'm Naruto, did your mom or dad have a kid the other didn't know about before now? I mean you're the only other person I know who can use more than one element, and isn't Bolin started before Mako said. You're the avatar, and I'm an idiot Mako said getting a nod from the two. True on both counts she said, as Bolin lead the two to the training room. The public city training room. Alright Kor let's see what you got Bolin said, as he and Naruto watched Kor stand in front of a net with two stacks of earth plates, before sending two at the net, getting an applaud from Naruto and Bolin. Good power, but in a real match you'd be a sitting turtle duck. You can't be so upright and flat footed, you have to be light on your toes until the right moment, and dig in, and strike. Naruto cared to demonstrate Bolin said getting a nod from the black and gray haired teen as he stood next to her in a boxer's stance, launching two plates quickly. Think of it like the training I put you through for the past few days Naruto said, as he moved back to Bolin getting a nod. Alright let's try it again she said practicing her stance bouncing on her feet before she sent two plates flying one after the other quickly. Nice adjustment core like I said the practice of the white lotus will only get you so far for any style you use. You need to branch out which is why you and I are here to learn more styles of bending for you to learn Naruto said, as Mako yawned. Alright Bolin I'm going to bed don't stay up too late, and it was nice to see you avatar Kora Naruto Mako said, as he went to his place of sleep. You two stay here. Kora said getting a nod. Yeah our folks died when we were kids, so we stay here thanks to Toza, and Naruto letting us stay here Bolin said, as they got into a silence. 
I'm going to turn in too if you guys want we can pick this back up tomorrow he said, as they nodded allowing Bolin to head to his room with his brother, as Naruto and Kora walked out. Naruto, how do you know Mako and Bolin? She asked, as they two got on a boat. It was when I was just instated, as a metal bender police officer I was put on the line to intercept a gang, and came across them. They weren't doing anything bad or serious opposed to what the groups usually do. Just petty things you know pickpocketing, counting the money, and other small things. I busted them, and brought them in, and did what I could to make sure they stayed out of trouble Naruto explained, as he used water bending to push the boat to the island. Mako hates me because he thinks I'm looking down on him while Bolin, and I hit things off, as I looked out for them. Even gave Bolin some tips on earth bending which led to the two of them getting to the pro bending league, he explained getting a sigh from Kora, as they snuck back on the island, before Naruto used water bending to push the boat back. Now get some sleep you have training in the morning, Naruto said getting a groan from Kora, as Naruto got into his sleepwear before getting in bed. The next morning. Standing at the spinning gates again, Naruto watched Kora run inside frustrated before hitting a few gates making her start hitting the gates with her fire bending. That was a 2000 year old historical treasure. What's wrong with you? Tenzin said getting an eye roll before kneeling down near Janor and her siblings. He does remember I've had to replace that 2000 year old historical treasure a couple dozen times right? Naruto said getting a nod, as Janora came close to his ear. The last time he talked about it he said it was 6,000 years old she said, making him raise an eyebrow shaking his head, as he stood between the two before they came to trading blows. Calm down Tenzin. I gave you a warning that keeping her cooped up without anything to calm herself, was going to bring about negative effects. I mean Kora isn't a born airbender it takes more effort for her to do this, and you're tossing her into the difficult stuff head first without any basics to stand on, isn't helping he said staring Tenzin down. It just hasn't been sinking in like you said it would I'm going for a walk, and calm down, I'll see you on the beach to continue training Naruto she said storming past Tenzin, while Naruto shook his head. What's her problem? Tenzin said getting a sigh from Naruto. You're thinking like an airbender while talking to a woman of waterbender nationality, but the mentality of an earthbender. In the eyes of an earthbender you're trying to move a mountain with your bare hands. It's not possible, you have to ease her into it, and explain like granny did with Ong after a while, and when you're training you try to tear her down. You need to pat her on the back, take the time to explain or show her what she's doing wrong, and go from there he said, making Tenzin stare at him. Look, come down to the beach with me, and sit in on our training. I'll show you how it works Naruto said getting a nod from the others, as they followed Naruto. At the beach. Alright Kor we're going to work on water bending for a start. With water bending you have to be smooth and fluent with your movements, while not wasting a single movement, Naruto said walking to the water, as he created two long mirrors of water that stood on either side of him. Water is the most versatile of the elements next to fire and earth, as it can not only heal, but hurt. Like so Naruto said making the two mirrors swirl around him before a dragon made of water surged towards a tree before firing a sickle of ice at the tree, impaling it before it was swallowed by the water dragon that froze the tree solid. Before we start with the advanced stuff I want us to start off simple. I want you to get a feel for the water, go lay on your back, and float in the water. Once you feel a connection I want you to calm your breathing, as you allow it to guide you, and when you do create a bubble to fire out a barrage of needles, Naruto said getting a nod from Kor, as she laid on her back closing her eyes before standing with her on a platform of ice before crossing his legs watching her. You must remain calm, and continue to breathe, as you take action. The element of water like fire is a dangerous element, as it can be calm at moments before it becomes a dangerous force that can decimate all in its path. For bending you can't just pick one path of the road to walk on, for you will lose balance Naruto said, as he watched Kora take deep breaths before getting up slowly creating several medium sized bubbles, that shot out thousands of tiny needles that buried themselves in the tree close to the shore, causing it to gain cracks, making Naruto grin. You see by feeling a connection to the element you can fully utilize that element to its fullest to where it becomes an extension of yourself. Earth, air, and fire falls under this category, as well, but earth is about keeping a firm grip on yourself, lose that grip, and it could be dangerous, an example would be sand Naruto said, making the group listening raise an eyebrow. Sand. Kora said joining him on land getting a knot before making claws with his hand, as the ground around him shook, as a large ring of gravel started to crumble, as it turned to sand before he jumped standing on the sand cloud. As he flew around before several tendrils flew around grabbing things before creating a large sphere of sand that expanded into several branches that stabbed the ground in a flurry. You see the core. Earth when used can be destructive either, as it is or in the form of metal or sand Naruto explained, as he saw her nod. Now instead of overloading you will work on water for a moment so you can have a better grip over it. If you have water on hand I want you to act with it, as if it were second nature same for your other elements, but since I'm not a firebender, I'm a bit useless in that field same for airbending. But you should be able to actually draw water from around you Naruto said getting a chuckle from the girl. 
Now do what I do Naruto said getting in a loose stance, as he brought a stream of water around him which Kora copied, as the two did a series of movements making the water dance, before he made two claws of water attached to his arms which Kora did, and started to do a series of slashes, and grabs. Watching on the sidelines, Tenzin saw the training, as he thought Naruto is a good teacher with how he's guiding her, but he's no airbender. Water and earth may be his forte, but air is my field, and I know best he thought watching Kora mess up a movement making Naruto stop her, and explain what was wrong. How about we call training for today done, and finish off with some light physical training alright, Naruto said getting a nod, as the two stood straight, as the two bent their knees stretching, performing the style of martial arts Naruto started teaching her before they stopped resting. The public city arena. Hey you guys, are we on time? Naruto asked with Kora nearby when they noticed the look of depression. Am I late or did the other team forfeit? I mean the only reason you should be looking like this is because someone died, your opponent forfeited or some other reason like you lost already Naruto said, as he went into the locker to grab a fire ferret uniform. We might as well have. A shock's a no good no show he ditched us. Mako said when the judge came in. You've got two minutes ready to play or you're disqualified he said before the door closed getting a surprised expression from Naruto. Great there goes our chance of entering the tournament and the winnings Mako said groaning. Why don't you ask one of them to be your replacement? Kora said pointing to the other three boys in the room in their uniforms, while trying not to eye Naruto changing into his uniform. No they're already on a team, and the rules state you can only compete on one team Naruto said, as he stood next to Kora looking at her. Why not Kora? I've been teaching her about pro bending when we aren't busy training her earth, water, and air elements. Why not? Naruto said putting his hand on Kora's shoulder. But she's the avatar, isn't that technically cheating? Bolin said getting a shrug from Naruto. Not necessarily if she sticks with just water bending. Now it would be cheating if she used all three elements during the fight, now that would be cheating, Naruto said when Mako spoke up. Not happening, I'd rather forfeit than look like a fool out there. I already gotta work with Beifong, the last thing I need is to humiliate myself further by working with someone who doesn't even know the rules, Mako said getting a glare from Kor. Well thanks for the vote of confidence asshole because if I remember correctly you need three members, and you wouldn't be here now if Naruto didn't pull your butt out of the dragon fire last time. You want the winnings, and go to the tournament we're offering, Kora said when the judge opened the door again. Are you playing or not? He said, as the group went silent before Mako could speak Kora beat him to the punch. Yeah we're in, just let me put on my uniform. She said making Naruto raise an eyebrow her, while Mako glared. You taught me water bending Naruto let me show you what I can do plus if you're helping your friend I want to do the same she said, getting a nod from the boy before turning allowing her to put on her uniform. I don't remember agreeing with this. Mako said making the three stare at each other before looking at Mako. Fine we'll put it to a vote. All in favor of Kora helping with this raise your hand Naruto said, getting all three of them to raise their hand save for Mako. All pose. He said getting a raise hand from the firebender. The majority has it we're doing this now stop complaining Naruto said making the firebender drop his head. At the center stage. It seems the fire ferrets are full of substitutions. First it's Republic City's golden boy Naruto Beifum. Substituting for Bolin, and now we have a replacement waterbender. Let's see if she's a diamond in the rough like Naruto in the last match, as we enter the final qualifiers to enter the tournament. The announcer said, as the three squared off against their opposing team. Whispering to Kora Naruto said, just stick to what I taught you, and remember remain calm, and keep a level head. Getting a nod the judge said players, are you ready? Blowing his whistle the bell rung, as Kora swung her leg sending a stream of water at her opponent, knocking him off the side of the rope, getting a groan from Naruto and Mako, while Kora cheered. Turning to Naruto, Mako said I thought you taught her the rules. I didn't think something so obvious would have to be explained. Pardon the hell out of me for not thinking ahead of time to prevent that. Naruto said with the eye twitch before turning to Kora who was still cheering. The judge watching the moment said fire ferret waterbender. Penalty move back one zone. Why? Kora asked getting a sigh from Naruto making her turn to the two boys. You're only allowed to knock the opponent off the back of the field, Kora. Knocking them off the side is against the rules, Naruto said getting a nervous chuckle from Kora, as she moved back making the bell ring allowing the match to resume. Sending a whip of water at her opponent, she got pushed back slightly before jumping, and sending a larger whip at her opponent with her foot standing over the line getting another whistle from the judge. Penalty over the line. Move back to zone 3. He said getting a growl from Kora while Naruto looked back watching her, as he signaled her to keep a cool head, as the bell rung. The platypus bears take round 1. The announcer said, as the teams reset on the field before the other team focused their attacks on Kora. The platypus bears know a green player when they see one, and they are focusing the brunt of their attacks on this poor girl. Wherever they found her they should send her back for a refund. The announcer said, as she slowly got pushed back, as Kora created blockades to stop the attacks. 
but gaining her footing course saw the earth, and firebenders send an attack at the same time making her subconsciously bring two plates of earth to block the attacks, making everything freeze. Did that water bend just like the earth bend? The announcer said confused, as the judge was just, as confused on his call of a fell. At the temple. Did I see that right? Hold on folks we're waiting for the judge to come up with the final call, but I think this replacement player could be the announcer said over the radio with several white lotus members sitting around it. Pardon me, but have either of you seen Kora or Naruto? I went to check on them when I didn't find them in their rooms, Tenzin said, as one of the lotus pointed at the radio. There's no way. First there was Naruto Beifong in the match against the Tigrillos, as the replacement earthbender, and now we have the avatar covering for the waterbender who became a no-show can you believe that Tenzin heard, as his eye twitched. I'll get those two myself. Tenzin said storming off to the arena. At the arena. The judge said after moments of conversing with the other judges, as he said, the avatar will be permitted to play so long, as she solely bends water. The other team wasn't too fond of it, as the match was about to start Naruto formed the sign a timeout, as he walked to Kor. Kor, I need you to understand a few rules. You can't use two elements at once, you can't cheat like if I crushed pieces of earth, and mixed it with your water to launch it at your opponent or other things. You can be hot tempered in this, remember our training, and Tenzin's training, and we'll pull through. Can you do that? He said getting a nod from Kor getting a pat on the back from Naruto, as he nodded to the judge letting the match continue. The platypus bears continued to focus their attacks on Kor, as she ducked and dodged around their attacks, while well, the announcer said she may be the avatar, but she's no pro bender, as the platypus bears continued to exploit her inexperience, as she gives it her best only for it to not be enough, as she's knocked over the edge. Looking back Naruto growled before brought out two plates, and fired them at the firebender knocking him in the stomach, as it pushed into zone 2. With Kor. Damn it Naruto talks about keeping a level head, but it's difficult to do when I'm getting pelted by three benders with me being stuck with a single element, she thought reaching the lift back to her team's starting point, when she saw a familiar pair of footwear, making her look up to see the glaring face of Tenzin, and Lin. Oh hey Tenzin this is Beifong, what are you two doing here? She said, as she pulled herself out of the water. Once again Kora you flagrantly disobeyed my orders. You were to stay on the island, and here you are with Naruto messing around. It's a good thing I got Lin to get Naruto out of this stupid sport Tenzin said, as the two turned to Lin who shrugged. I'm actually here to cheer on Naruto. He's got a knack for it, although his water bending is his better alignment he's still holding up pretty well she said, watching Tenzin walk off. Come on Kora we're leaving, and we're grabbing Naruto. Tenzin said getting a glare from Kora. No. We're in the middle of something. Naruto was begged by Bolin to help, and I agreed to help because they were bender short. I'm not going to back out just because you can't stand something new or get outside your little comfort zone Kora said, as Tenzin turned back to her with Lin watching. I have tried my best to get through to you by being gentle and patient, but it seems that the only thing that gets through to you is force, so I am ordering you and Naruto to come back to the temple now. Tenzin said getting a scoff from Kor. Gentle. Patient. Every step of our training you've done nothing, but throw me into something without knowing what the hell I'm supposed to do. At least at the South Pole the White Lotus Masters would take the time to explain, despite looking down on me for not standing on Ong's natural level. And what are you going to teach me anyway? To sit around the temple to meditate on how bad an airbender I am. I'm beginning to understand why I'm unable to airbend because maybe I just don't need it. Kor said yelling at Tenzin. That's a ludicrous suggestion the avatar needs to learn airbending, it is not optional. He said getting a negative from Kor. No, this is what I need to learn. Modern styles of fighting. She said getting a shake of the head from Tenzin. Being the avatar is more than just fighting. When will you learn that? He said getting silence from Kor, as she walked towards the lift with Lin, as they rose. The platypus bears win round two. The announcer said, as the two teams reset once again. Back on the field. Round three. The announcer said, as the platypus bears waterbender sent several blasts of water at Naruto dodged them fluently, as he fired several plates back, pushing him into the second zone, before Naruto was pushed back by the firebender. Getting overwhelmed both the water and earthbenders pushed Naruto and Mako to a corner, as they tried to regain their footing, the platypus bears quickly come out of the gate and put their focus on the main threat of Naruto and Mako, as they struggled to get their bearing, as they're wedged in the edge of zone 1 unable to help the avatar. Looking out of the corner of his eye, as he saw the fire, an earthbender put their focus on Kora Naruto ducked under the stream, launching a plate at the waterbender pushing him back, as Naruto and Mako struggled to catch up. Bidding pushed back Kora thought back to what Naruto said keep calm, and remember all of my training from Naruto, and Tenzin, let's give it a try. Fire ferret's booth. Looks like the avatar's pro bending debut is going to be cut short, as she's pushed back to zone 3 the group of 3 heard, as Tenzin covered his face walking away, while Lin and Bolin watched Kora balance herself on the edge. You might want to see this Tenzin. Lin said, as she made the bald airbender turn to see Kora twist, and turn around the strikes. Hold the phone. 
she's still in the game folks, and she's moving like an entirely different player. All of a sudden the platypus bear strikes are only hitting air. The announcer said, as Kora danced around the strikes. How about that Tenzin said amaze, as he watched Kora move. Arena stage. The platypus bears are out of steam while Naruto and Mako are still in the game, as the two get on the offensive. Everyone saw, as Naruto and Mako nodded to each other, as they pushed the exhausted team around, and over the edge winning them the match. The fire fairies come from way behind, and steal the win. What a huge upset folks. If you thought their last match was a nail biter, then this will have surely put you over the edge of your seats, as they land themselves a place in the tournament. The announcer said, as Naruto and Korra celebrated while Mako walked over. Korra that was amazing I apologize for being a hard ass back there, and thank you for helping us when we were in a pinch, you really came alive in that round he said, getting a chuckle from the two. Thanks, but I can't take all the credit I've had a few amazing teachers Kora said, as she punched Naruto in the shoulder, getting a chuckle from him when he heard a cough behind them, as they saw Lin and Tenzin. Hey mom Tenzin I guess you saw. He said getting a nod from the two, and Kora. I'm impressed Naruto, and I'm proud you stood to your beliefs, and helped your friend, and you helped them qualify for the tournament, Lin said hugging her son, making him do the same before they pulled apart. Well you did tell me to stand by my friends when in need you know he said, as she nodded when Bolin swung his good arm around Naruto's neck hugging him, and doing the same for Kor and Mako. We're going to the tournament. I can't believe it this is amazing, and the winnings will be greatly appreciated, Bolin said getting a nod from his brother, as they waved goodbye, as he walked out with his brother to celebrate. How about we head home, Tenzin said getting a shrug from the others, as they were about to walk home. Actually I wanted to try something first Kora said, as they stared at her with a curious expression before relenting. At the airbender temple. Watching the white lotus guards replace the gates Kora said Tenzin I wanted to apologize about everything I said. I was really frustrated with myself, and I took it out on you when you were just trying to help she said getting a shake of the head from Tenzin. I should apologize, as well. I was trying to teach you about patience, and I ended up losing mine in the process. Naruto was right I was throwing you into the field without the proper tools to survive it, expecting you to get it like me, and my children, because you have airbender blood in you, you're not a natural born airbender, you're a waterbender. And I forgot that he said getting a smile from Korra, as she hugged him which she returned. But the whale in, and I saw your match you two were amazing pro bending isn't, as bad, as I thought it was after I gave it a chance to see for myself, he said getting a chuckle from the two benders, after the guards put the gates in place, the two turned to see Naruto, and Lin standing to the side. Standing in front of the gates Tenzin created a strong gust, as the three watched Kora stand at the gates before taking a breath, as he eased her way into the gate dancing around the gates in the same manner, as he did in the match, while Naruto watched the light of the moon dance on her deeply tanned skin. Coming out on the other side Naruto, and admittedly Lin, applauded Kora on her display, as she walked over to them, as Tenzin patted her on the shoulder. But Jock Kora you move just like an airbender he said, making the water tribe girl blush from the praise, as Lin bent down to whisper in her son's ear. How do you think Tenzin is going to act when he learns that you two are a part of the fire fairs permanently? She said getting a chuckle from Naruto. I'm willing to wager a couple of gold pieces that says it won't be well, although I'm more so sub in case he the Korra Bolin are out of commission, because the finals are in a couple of weeks, enough time for him to heal his arm, and train. This is more so for Korra to have an outlet for her frustrations, and relax. Did you know he tried to control her bathroom schedule? Hema had to draw the line at that point threatening him with him having to sleep in another room if he tried it, Naruto said getting a chuckle from Lin. Do you think I can stay here with all of you? She said getting a shrug from him, as he said. You just want to have my cooking Naruto said getting a shrug from her in return, as they walked to the main part of the tower for some sleep. Catching a worn brown leather medicine ball, Kara asked with an irritation plain on her face. Want to remind me why we're practicing so early. This evil Naruto has to launch me out of my bed with earth bending. I wouldn't have to bend your bet if you got up in time for training besides if I didn't Tenzin would nag your ear off Naruto said wearing his training clothes leaning against the wall, as he drew a blush from Kora, as she admitted he was the better of the two options. As she pushed the ball back to Bolin, as he tossed it to Mako he said, since we're rookies we naturally get the worst time slot in the gym. As Mako turned to Kora he said pushing it towards the avatar, and you're the rookiest of us all if we want to survive in the tournament, we got to get you up to speed, because I doubt the ref is going to let you get away with you launching a guy over the side of the field, or using more than one element, so deal with it. Catching it, she glared at the firebender before pushing it with extra force towards Miko, saying you deal with it. As he caught it he went tumbling back when the group of four heard the gym doors open, as they heard there are my hard working little street urchins. Putting a hand on Kora's shoulder the man said, it's nice to finally meet you avatar. Confused, she asked, you are. Giving a chuckle he introduced himself, as he took off his hat the name is Botaka, I run the whole pro bending shebang. As he reached into his coat pocket he said pulling out a large stack of bills here's your winnings from the last match. 
but the grinmaker was about to pocket the money before Botaka stopped him listing off fine such as Cora's uniform, training equipment and rentals, his and Bolin's rent and groceries leaving nothing left getting a blank expression from Naruto. As Botaka was about to walk away he said oh one more thing the fire fairs need to ante up 30,000 yuans for the championship pot. Flabbergasted Bolin exclaimed 30,000 yuans we can barely make 25 in pocket change. Hearing this Taka gained a sympathetic expression as he patted the boy's shoulder, saying I'm sorry kids really you got till the end of the week to come up with the money or you're out of the competition. As Taka walked away Naruto and Kora stood next to Mako and Bolin as Bolin looked to Kora asking, you wouldn't happen to have some secret stash of treasure or goods you or your past lives had lying around would you? Pulling at the lining of her pockets she said sorry I'm broke. As the others turned to Naruto he sighed scratching the back of his head, saying I may be the lieutenant, but my pockets aren't 30,000 yuans deep man at the most I can bum you 9,010 at the most I'm looking for my own place, since I'm getting to the age of living on my own. Picking up the medicine bowl, and his carrying bag Mako said at least you got something. Feeling like a bastard Naruto said sorry man I didn't mean to say it like that. Giving a shake of the head bowl and said, it's cool Naruto we know you didn't mean it like that besides you know that after you helped Mako and I out after our parents died the two of us have been on our own. Having a moment of silence Naruto said clapping his hands hey let's get over this funk, we gotta brainstorm on how to make 21,000 yuan. Excitedly Bolin said holding up Pabu his and Mako's pet fire fared, I've been training Pabu to do circus tricks and people would pay some good money to see him do tricks. Raising an eyebrow Naruto looked to Kora and Mako before he said um not to burst your bubble pal, and not that it isn't a grand idea, but at the most you'd make within the time frame is just under 300 to 500 yuan that's counting if you can attract them or keep them entertained. I suppose you're right Naruto Bolin said, as his pet ferret rubbed its head under his chin. I'll figure something out I always do Mako said getting a bland look from Naruto, as he shook his head. How about we go for a walk and get a bite to eat? Naruto suggested, as he got a positive from Kora while Bolin shook his head. Now I'm going to try and think of a way to make some money you guys go on ahead he said, getting a raised eyebrow from Naruto. Alright man, but you can always stop by the temple, since that's where I'm staying man stay out of trouble, Naruto said getting a fist bump from Bolin before Naruto and Kora walked off. At the Raymond stand. Watching Kora polish off her 12th bowl of Raymond while Naga downed her 4th Naruto couldn't help, but sweat drop at the sight thinking is this how Uncle Twinkle Toes feels when he used to take me out for Raymond when I was a kid. I mean I even used to take Jinora out for Raymond when she was little, and not even she ate this much. Going to his 16th bowl Naruto heard a chuckle from in front of him, as he saw an old man with a sun-kissed hand with brown hair, and closed eyes, as he said, You know Naruto, I would never have imagined you'd bring someone else with an appetite like yours Naruto beside your mom. Scratching the back of his head he said well, anyone could eat as much as me if they had a taste of your food, Tuchi Chichi. How's aim? She's doing alright she's just at home sick with a cold he said getting a sympathetic look from Naruto. Well then tell her I hope she feels better. How else is this place going to stay open without a pretty face? He asked getting a chuckle from Tuchi, as he took all of Naruto's, Kora's, and Naga's bowls, as Naruto placed the money on the table with a tip, as the two walked out. Museum. Kora asked, as she and Naruto rode on the back of Naga, as they rode to catch the ferry. Aim is Tuchi's daughter, and she's like an older sister to me, a sweet girl. Almost everyone in Republic City loves her, and she helps bring in business, since she's considered one of the most attractive civilians in Republic City. She's also a firebender while her father is an earthbender. Her mom used to work there before she passed due to an illness he said, getting a sad expression from Kor. That's so sad to hear she said getting a nod from him. Yeah, but the two are pretty strong actually one of the gangs here tried to steal money from them, and the two kicked the collective asses of the entire gang by themselves he said getting a white eyed look from Kor. Seriously she asked getting a nod from the teen holding on to her from behind. Yup I was there when it happened. You see I was still learning how to water bend and earth bend so they were looking out for me. Man AM could kick some ass. She's considered the second Azla. With her blue fire bending he said as Kora looked at him in surprise. Seriously blue fire as in the same fire Azla used when she was hunting Avatar on down. Kora asked getting a positive from the boy holding on to her as she tried not to blush. Yup that very same fire Chenzin, and Granny Katara hypothesized that she's related to her in some form maybe a great granddaughter or something since she escaped on, and the others at least that's what Kaya tells me Naruto said, as they stopped at the dock, allowing the two teenagers hop off Naga's back, and step onto the boat, as it arrived ahead of schedule. Hours later at the lake. You know Kor I've noticed your bending has been making a great improvement Naruto said, as the two stretched, as per their usual routine. Do you think so? She asked getting a positive from the dual element bender, as he popped his shoulders. Yup, but just because you're improving doesn't mean we're going to go easy during training he said, making the water tribe girl's shoulders slump, when they heard yelling in the distance, as they turned to see Mako running towards them. Mako what are you doing out so late? 
Naruto asked watching the firebender huffing as he bent over with his hands on his knees. H have you seen boy? I came home from working at the power plant and he wasn't at our place so I thought maybe he might be here Mako asked as Naruto and Korra shared a concerned look. We haven't seen him since we left the bending arena I really hope nothing bad happened otherwise this could end bad Naruto said as he scratched his head. As much as I hate to think it he has a knack for getting himself into stupid situations. I guess I'll keep looking around see you guys later, Mako said walking away before Naruto put a hand on his shoulder. Dude I know you don't want to think it, but we are friends if Bolin is in trouble, we'll help you look for him Naruto said, as Korra nodded with her arms crossed. Yeah we can take Naga she said, getting a curious look from the firebender. Is Naga? He asked getting a chuckle from Naruto. My best friend, and an amazing tracker Korra said, drawing a pal from Naruto, as he turned to Korra. Ah, and here I thought I was your best friend, Naruto said looking away in false indignation, as the waterbender blushed. Of course you're my best friend, but Naga and I have known each other since we were little come on we can get your bike too, I'll meet you guys at the docks, Horus said, as the two boys shrugged, as they watched the waterbender run off. Sitting in silence Mako asked, feeling uncomfortable, as he looked at Naruto from the corner of his eye, before they walked to the docks so his Naga. Getting a chuckle from the lieutenant of the metal bending force, Naruto said, trust me Mako you couldn't possibly miss her. Confused, he shrugged, as they stopped a short way from the dock where a Future Industries motorcycle sat, as Mako looked at the bike in surprise. Do you have a Future Industry bike? Chuckling he nodded yeah it was a birthday present, and I've been taking care of her ever since. Nodding the two boys felt the earth shake lightly, as Mako jumped at the side of the massive polar bear dog with her owner on her back, what the hell is that? Chuckling Naruto said rubbing Naga's head making the mixed species creature's tail wag, I told you Mako you can't miss her even if you tried. Seeing the fairy chorus said come on we have to hurry the fairy is coming, and I doubt both Naruto and I could water bend the four of us and his motorcycle across the water. I agree well that would be a good test to see how far my bending has come, I'd rather not drown Naruto said, as the others rode to the ferry, as Mako sat behind Kora on Naga. In Republic City. So your best friend is a polar bear dog somehow that makes perfect sense, Mako said sitting on the far back of Naga, as Naruto drove at the same speed as Naga, so he didn't leave them behind. I'll take that, as a compliment city boy besides Ong had Momo, and Appa why can't I have Naga she said, as she looked out of the corner of her eye at Mako before looking at Naruto, watching the wind blow his hair back. As the group of four continued through the street they stopped in front of a metal statue of Zuko, that was holding a ball of fire, making the teens dismount their rides. So why are we here exactly Mako? Naruto asked, as he leaned against Naga with a curious expression on his face. This is Bolin's usual hangout Mako said, as he looked around, as he saw a few kids playing around before he approached one. Hey you kids haven't happened to see my brother around here have you? Mako asked, as the kids stopped playing while the group of teens approached the kids. A kid wearing a newsboy cap said maybe my memory is a little fuzzy. Maybe you can help remind me. Pulling a couple yuan out of his pocket Mako waited for the boy to continue, as he said I saw him around noon, performing some kind of monkey rat circus. It wasn't going well, I could say that much. Getting a sweat drop from Naruto he thought seriously Bolin. I told you this wasn't a good idea man. As the boy was about to continue he held out his hand making Mako slap another couple yuan in the kid's hands. As he continued Shady Shin showed up flashing some serious cash in his face, even dropped a couple thousand in his cup. Oh man not him Naruto groaned under his breath making Kor look at him. Who's Shady Shin? The avatar asked getting an irritated sigh from Naruto. He's one of the triple threats triad, and one of the gangs here in the city I've come close to slamming his ass in a cell a dozen times, but he's a slick, as a freshly waxed turtle duck's shell Naruto said drawing attention from the boy, as his eyes widened. Oh man it's the police I'm out of here. Shin said running before Naruto thrust his arm out making water materialize out of air, as it dragged the boy back. Cool your engines I'm off the clock now did Bolin go with Shin, and if so what do you know? I suggest you don't pull the my memory is getting fuzzy trip, otherwise I could put you in prison, Naruto warned getting a nod from the boy. He left with Shin after he flashed his cash the boy said before looking around, gesturing for the three teens to draw closer. The triple threats, the red monsoons, and the inaikais they're all muscling up for something serious, that's all you're getting out of me he said running making Naruto growl scratching the back of his head. This great all three gangs are gathering, and it cannot be good by any means, Naruto said with Miko nodding, while Kora wore a confused expression. What was he talking about? She asked making the two boys look at her. A turf war is brewing, and Bolin is going to be caught in the center of it, we got to find him, and fast Mako said getting a nod from Naruto, as Naruto got on his motorcycle, while Mako got on Naga behind Kora, as they left. So where are we heading? Kora asked, as they crossed the bridge past the train cars. The triple threat triad's headquarters hopefully Bolin is there, and nothing has gone down yet Mako said, as Naruto drove behind Naga. The triple threat triad. I knocked some of those clowns around when I first got here. Why would Bolin hang around them? 
she asks, as Naga suddenly charged down an alley making Naruto follow. As Naga has something to a street post, before Naruto's vision was blurred, making him stop, as he removed what was obstructing his vision to see Pabu. Pabu? Naruto said, as he held the little ferret out of Naga's reach before the two started to sniff each other before he jumped on Naga's head, and scurried to Mako. The Pabu isn't with Bolin, then things really aren't good Naruto said, as Mako told them they have to hurry. Triple Threat Triad Base Something's wrong the triple threat usually has thugs posted out front we got to be careful Mako said, as Naruto parked out front before his shoes shifted to reveal the soles of his shoes, before stomping with his eyes closed before they snapped open in alarm. What's wrong? Mako asked, as Naruto shook his head in a negative fashion. The place looks like there was a fight in there it's completely empty Naruto said, as Kora kicked open the doors, showing he was telling the truth, before they heard motorcycles go on out back making the 3 plus Naga, and Pabu go out the back to see a armored truck, and several motorcycles in the back with people dressed in bodysuits with glowing goggles drive off. Bolin's inside. Naruto yelled, as he ran out to stop them before two of the motorcyclists tossed two canisters obscuring their vision. You guys go on Naga I'll be right behind you. Naruto said running back to his motorcycle while Kora called for Naga, as they followed after the group with Naruto close behind them, as Mako shot a ball of fire at the motorcyclist. As Kora bent the earth beneath one of the equalists he shot into the air, thanks to Mass Rider jumping off the impromptu ramp. As they continued to give chase two equalists tossed some rope, making it coil around Naga's legs, while the other got tangled in Naruto's wheel, making the animal and machine lurch forward, making the three riders fly off, as they skidded across the ground groaning. That was unpleasant Naruto said wiping the side of his face, as Mako and Kora nodded in agreement, while the truck drove off with the rest of the equals save for four. If we want to catch them we're going to have to fight these jokers Naruto said, as he charged at the first flipping before going for a kick which was blocked, as he made a pillar of earth fly knocking the equalist in the stomach, as he skidded back before he could hit Naruto's leg. Looking behind him he flipped over a jab kicking the attacker in the back, making him fly to his friend, as Naruto said Mako, Kora be careful. The Kai blockers, they hit you, and it's over. Not giving reply Naruto focused on the water in the grate, and made it solidified before firing a barrage of needles, as he ran behind them, kneeing one of them in the stomach before twisting around to his hands, avoiding a blow to the ribs, as he spun kicking them both in the head. Kai blocking gotta love it in these circumstances Naruto thought to himself before bending to the side dodging a kick before he locked his leg around the attackers, as he delivered a series of quick jabs to the man's side, before he spun around to the man's backside, getting his leg before he was kicked in the chest, making him skid back. That may have stung, but it barely registered, as painful compared to all the training mom, and the others put me through for years as Naruto thought, as he flipped back, as B avoided a foot about to slam into his head from above, as he spun around tripping the attacker before using his earth bending. As he made a pull to slam into the Kai blocker before delivering a kick to the pillar making it crack, as a large chunk of rock smacked into another equalist's head, making him fall over unconscious. Behind him he felt flashes of heat making him look out of the corner of his eye to see Kor and Mako try and fire bend against the equalist Kai blockers, only for them to be knocked to the ground after receiving a barrage of quick jabs. Running to Kor and the others he jabbed the third equalist in the ribs and between his shoulders making him fall to his knees before he heard Naga making him turn to see Naga charge at the man behind him, making the equalists jump back tossing smoke screen as they jumped on their motorcycles driving off in the smoke, grabbing the two Naruto knocked out. Trying to shoot a fireball Kor said alarm why can't I bend? As Naruto placed his hand on her shoulder he said calm down those guys are Kai blockers they hit you the way they did, and they can stop you from bending, they work for Amon before Kai blocking became what it was thanks to Amon, it was once used by a girl named Tai Li, one of the two girls who once assisted Azula, in chasing down Fire Lord Zuko, Iroh, and the Avatar with Granny Toph. Wait Amon, that anti-bending guy with the mask. She asked getting a nod from the scarf wearing boy. That's him Amon he runs the equalists what they want with the triple threats I don't know Mako said getting a groan from Naruto. And here I thought we finally managed to gather some information damn it. Naruto exclaimed, as he slammed his fist into the ground, making a crater around his fist with spiderweb cracks forming around his fist. Man he's stronger than I thought I gotta remember to not say something that will get me killed when around him Mako thought, as he sighed smacking his forehead with his palm. I can't believe Bolin got caught up in all this. He exclaimed making Naruto put a calm hand on the firebender's shoulder. Dude calm down we'll find him let's take a look around the city, maybe we can find some sort of let Naruto said, as Kora nodded agreeing with him making the firebender side before agreeing, as he got on Naga's back with Kora, while Naruto removed the rope from the front wheel, making him follow after Kora and Mako. Time step end of the night. Stopping at a random alley Kora slightly pulled back on Naga's reins, allowing the exhausted mixed breed to breathe, as she plopped to the floor while Naruto stopped, as he removed the key from his motorcycle. Stretching, as she popped her back Kora said, we've been looking all night, and there's no sign of him. 
In his exhausted state Mako said we have to keep looking, but where? The young Naruto said with rings under his eyes we looked all over the city and haven't come across so much as a tire track if any of you know somewhere we haven't been I'm all for it. I know where spot we haven't been to yet Kora said as she patted Naga making her get up making Naruto and Mako look at each other with a raised eyebrow before shrugging as Naruto revved up his motorcycle following after Kora and Mako. The public city park. Stopping in front of the fountain Naga and Pabu drank from the water Naruto dipped his face into the water before pulling it back out as he breathed in relief sitting next to Kora with Miko on her right while Naruto wrung out his hair. When I first came to Republic City I ran into an equalist protester she said, pointing ahead of her at a vacant spot. And you believe this protester might know where Wolin is? Miko asked getting a nod from her as Naruto sighed. I hate to say this especially when it sounds like I'm giving up, but me, mom, and the rest of the police force have tried interrogating them, and they never gave of any useful information that it gave us false leads if he does speak, you'd have to be really certain it's the truth Naruto said stretching, as he popped his back. Either way it's our only lead right now Naruto what's with the bag anyway? Kor said, as she and Mako noticed the bag slung over his shoulder. My police uniform I carried with me because I felt we'd be out looking for bullying all night and wanted to be dressed ahead of time, Naruto said, as he got up walking behind a tall bush changing into his uniform, as he saw Kor and Mako sitting against Naga, making him rest against her hind leg. So why is Bolin running around with the triple threat triad anyway? Kor asked making the two male teens sigh. You want to tell her Naruto? Mako asked getting a shrug. If you want will you see Kor and Mako and Bolin used to do work for them back in the day, and no, they aren't criminals Kor, they are numbers for the triple threats, pretty much the only thing they could do, since they were orphans out on the street doing what they had to in order to survive, and for him to protect Bolin Naruto said, getting a nod from the firebender. I can honestly say if it were me in Mako's position I'd do the same thing. If I have to look out for my brother I'd do whatever was necessary in fact when I found them I bumped into them while they were working and booked them they got a minor sentence but they were okay and I then showed Bolin and Mako the pro bending place where they could work and practice their bending. And have lived Naruto said as he scratched his head. I'm sorry. Can I ask what happened to your parents? Kora asked making both Mako and Naruto look at her while Mako wasn't expecting it and was reluctant Naruto was curious as well since neither Bolin nor Mako told him. Looking at Kora he said pulling up his scarf. They were mugged by a firebender. He cut them down right in front of me, and I was eight at the time. Bolin is all the family I have left if something happened to him I don't know what I'd do. If this is the same protester I think you're talking about Kora, then we better get some sleep at least this way we'd be somewhat rested Naruto said, as the others nodded, as Naruto and the others pushed themselves deeper into Naga's side. A few hours later. The sight many passerbys came across was the golden boy Naruto sleeping against the avatar with her head on his lap and his hand on her hip while Mako was lying on Naga's front paw using her head as a pillow until they were woken up by the yelling of a megaphone, making the three teens open their eyes. As Naruto looked down making his eyes meet chorus before they moved from each other with a blush, ignoring the silent chuckle Mako sent their way. Hearing the yelling again they heard equality now. Equality now. We want equality now. Point across the bridge, as he stretched Naruto said I take it he's the guy you saw when you came here. She nodded, as they listened to the protester who had white sideburns wearing grey black and white clothes non-benders of Republic City. Amon calls you to take back your city. Walking forward they saw the protester standing on a wood table before he gasped saying with his megaphone pointing at Naruto and Kor, it's you again. You cannot silence me avatar not even with those benders you brought along with you. Smacking the megaphone out of his hands breaking it she said shut up and listen Mako's brother was kidnapped by Kai blockers, where did they take them? I have nothing to say he said before he felt Naruto's hand on his shoulder, making him turn to see the glaring eyes of the dark haired teen, as he noticed Naruto's eyes shift to a red color with slitted pupils, before changing back to their normal color. I doubt your family will be too willing to get you out of prison after having to do this the last 20 times they saved your hide. I can take you to prison right now with this evidence alone Naruto said, making the man sweat. What evidence he said, as Kora stomped on the ground making the table fly in the air, making the stacks of papers on the table fly around the area, while Naruto snatched one from the air, seeing a segment of a map, and Amon's illustration on it. You're working with Amon, and Amon leads the equalist to kidnap Miko's brother Bolin. If you refuse to cooperate I will take you in for questioning, and seeing, as we're in need of information on equalist, and Amon I can assure you the council will find you guilty along with your friend here, and hold you both for possibly years is losing your family. And friends worth staying in prison for someone who might not come to save your hide. For all we know the council may pin the crimes among, and the equalist has committed on you too Naruto said, holding one of the flyers that fell to the ground. Picking a flyer off the ground Mako read witness the revelation tonight 9 o'clock what's the revelation. Keeping his mouth shut his silent friend spoke up saying nobody knows what the revelation is and we honestly don't know what happened to your friend I swear, but if he's a bender then the spirits aren't on his side at the moment. 
Jin. The frightened protests at getting Ray's hands from the now spoken Jin as he turned to his friend. I'm not losing my wife and daughter just because you don't want to talk to Mushi. You want to end up in prison that's on you, I'd like to see my daughter and wife thank you he said as Naruto turned to Jin as he let go of Mushi. Thank you Jin. I appreciate your cooperation. Do you know anything about this map piece on the back? Naruto asked showing the flyer as the man took hold of it looking. The map piece is a secret location that holds the revelation if you find it then you can see the event, it's why the police never found anything he said making Naruto nod as he and his mom were part of the many raids as they found nothing every time. That's all we wanted, but just so you know not all benders are bad. I'll agree there are many of us who oppress non-benders, but many of us have no desire to cause harm, only to protect. I hope many of you will realize this someday Naruto said, as he and the others made their way back over to Naga and his bike as Pabu stood on the sea chattering at Naga. Since it's morning how about we get something in our stomach we can't plan without something to eat Naruto said, as their stomachs roared in agreement. Good idea we got to figure out what this map piece goes to it has to be something specific Mako said, as he vaulted on the back of Naga, while Naruto's motorcycle roared to life, as they made their way to a place to eat. At the Raymond stand. Why don't they mark the location on these things? Kora asked polishing off her fifth bowl of Raymond, while Mako was on his third, Naruto downed his eighth bowl. It's like Jin said they don't want the police or League of Benders trying to find them Naruto said, as he looked at the couple flyers Mako grabbed, as they left. We know it's a segment of a map, but Amon might try and put it somewhere else, for all we know it could be outside Republic City the firebender said, as he looked at the single red marker that adorned the map, before he picked them up holding pieces together. What if it's a puzzle? Look at the flyers they all cut off at certain points, but if you do it like this, Kora said taking the pieces Mako had, and the pieces Naruto had, and held them in a certain way making a larger image. Then it becomes a larger map, but now that you hold it up I swear I've seen that section before Naruto said before he turned to Tuchi. Hey old man, do you happen to have a map of the Republic City lying around? He asked getting a nod from the chef, as he went in back, as Kora and Mako looked at him. Why do you want a map of Republic City? Didn't you say it probably wasn't here? Mako asked getting a nod from Naruto. I did, but when I saw how the pieces fit together, it formed a portion of the map that rang a bell with me, Naruto said, as Tuchi came in with a map of the city, as Naruto thanked him before he took the pieces from Kora and glided them across the map before stopping over a matching section. That's where it's happening in the industrial district, but if we're going to save Bolin we'll need disguises, and, as mad, as I am to say only the three of us can do this, Naruto said making Kor and Mako look at him. Why? Kor asked with Mako just, as curious. Think about it. Yeah it's likely groups are going to go there together, but if we brought the police force they'd need their suits like I would, but I'm used to espionage missions. If we came by the net full the place would clear out fast Naruto said, making Mako not understanding him. And if that happened they'd take the captives somewhere else, and do whatever they're doing in private or worse, Mako finished getting a nod from Naruto. Like I said I'm no fan of this idea, as much as you too, but if we want to save Bolin, this is our only choice, Naruto said, as he stared at the others. I know just the disguises Kora said with a glint in her eyes making Naruto and Mako look at each other with a nervous expression. In the industrial district. I can't believe you got me wearing this jet of Mako said, as he held a fake cane with black tinted glasses, hiding what appeared to be a burn going over his eyes covering his eyes wearing a beige jacket that clasped shut on the right and hat. The lighten up besides you want to save Bolin don't you? Kora asked wearing a similar jacket with the sleeves rolled up wearing a cream colored hat with a green leaf on the hem of the hat in addition with Mako's scarf. The brother besides we're in, and then we're out, Naruto said wearing a black jacket with a red wig, and makeup covering his whisker marks, and a scar going over his right eye which was partially covered by his hair, as they turned to see everyone make their way to the building in front of them. Everyone remember our cover story in case we're confronted by equalists. Naruto asked getting a nod from the two. Of course Kora came up with the crazy idea. You my older brother who was injured fighting a couple of benders, and I was blinded by a firebender, and I live with you, and your fiancé who was orphaned because of one of the triad at a young age, Mako said, as he saw a blush form on Kora's and Naruto's cheeks. But now let's go the sooner we get Bolin the sooner I can get this makeup, and these clothes off I'm burning up in these things Naruto said, as he had his hand on Mako's shoulder, while Kora held onto his left arm, and her head on his shoulder, as they walked towards the building they were stopped by a large heaviset man. Crossing his arms he said glaring at the three this is a private event and you're not getting in without an invitation. Invitation sweetie you have one don't you? Kora asked looking at her boyfriend who looked around in his pockets before Mako coughed making the three turn to the blind boy who was holding up the flyer. You told me to hold on to it, remember? Mako said making the two teens sigh in relief. I forgot I said that bro thanks this is what you were talking about right? Naruto said taking the paper from his brother as the man nodded. That's it. Now tell me what are a couple of kids doing out here? The man asked making Naruto sigh in exasperation. 
Well, we hate benders, the whole lot of them. When my brother Rin and I were orphaned by a firebender who murdered our parents when we were six and blinded my brother while I got this scar over my eye. My girlfriend was also orphaned because benders culled her parents not too recently we want them gone just as much as anyone here Naruto said with a glare which got sympathetic looks from the group behind them and the imposingly large man in front of them as he stepped aside. The revelation is upon us my brothers and sister he said with a smile which they returned as they walked inside maneuvering through the halls to see a large party of civilians standing on the ground floor across from a stage decorated with banners. I knew people hated benders, but this many is ridiculous, Naruto said hanging his head, as he shook it lightly while Korra tightened her grip. We have to keep our eyes out for Bull and he's around here somewhere, Miko said getting a nod from the others, as the group of teens made their way to heart of the group. As soon as they reached the heart of the crowd from nowhere, they heard the center of the stage open up with smoke rising. Please welcome your hero. Your savior. Amon. Rising from the floor were several equalists with a man wearing a detailed uniform with two rods on his back. The man standing in the front wore dark colors with a hood slightly shading a porcelain white mask with eye holes and a red sun on the forehead. As everyone saw him the crowd went wild before he raised his hand to silence them saying my quest for equality many years ago. When I was a boy my family and I lived on a small farm we weren't rich and none of us were benders. Listening to him speak, Naruto heard Mako whisper dude knows how to entrance people doesn't he? Giving a faint nod Amon continued. With us not being benders this made us easy targets for the firebender who extorted my father, but one day my father confronted this man. But when he confronted the firebender that man took my family away from me, and then he took my face. I had been forced to hide behind a mask ever since. Looking to Korra he could see the surprise look on her face, as he continued, as you all know the avatar has recently arrived in Republic City. At the mention of Korra the crowd began to hiss, and boo at the mention of her, as he said, and if she were here she'd tell you that bending brings balance to the world, but she's wrong, as the only thing bending brought to the world is suffering. It has been the cause of every war, in every year. But that is about to change this I can assure you. I know you have been wondering what the revelation. Well I can say you are about to get your answer. Since the beginning of time the spirits have acted as guardians of our world, and they have spoken to me. They say the avatar has failed humanity Amon said, as Naruto winced feeling Korra tighten her grip on Naruto's arm, as her nails dug into his arm. That is why the spirits have chosen me to usher in a new era of balance. They have granted me a power a power that will make equality a reality, and that power is to take a person's bending away permanently he said, getting disbelieving looks from Naruto and Korra. That's impossible there's no way Korra said, as Mako agreed with her while Naruto stared straight ahead at the man in front of him, his eyes connected with his for a brief moment, before he continued to look amongst the crowd. And now for a demonstration please welcome Lightning Bolt's old leader of the Triple Threat Triad, and one of the most notorious criminals in Republic City. The police have tried to capture him time, and again only for him to escape Amon said, as a man wearing a grey suit with the top part being bright yellow with a lightning bolt diesel, as the crowd booed when more equalists brought in more of the triple threat triad, with Bolin making the three teens eyes whiting. As Korra was about to make a charge for him, Naruto gripped her shoulder making her turn before flinching at his eyes, as they were bright red with slitted pupils, as he said, we can't just charge and not with Amon, and the guy with the sticks on his back. A couple of Kai blockers I could handle no problem, but with their leader, and some second in command, I'm guessing we have to be tactical about this. Looking at him she said then I'm all for whatever plan you can come up with though captain. Already got one just follow my lead both of you when I make a move do, as I instruct Naruto said, making the two nod when they heard him on speak. Zolt has a massive fortune by extorting and abusing non-benders, but his reign of terror is about to come to an end. Amon said, as the crowd cheered. Nodding to one of the equalists with him he said, as the Kai blocker started to untie the ropes around Zolt's wrists, now in the interest of fairness, I will give Zolt the chance to fight to keep his bending. Confident Zolt shot several fireballs that Amon dodged effortlessly making his way to the firebender, when Zolt fired a bolt of lightning which the mask group leader ducked grabbing the extended limb, as he manually aimed Zolt's wrist to the sky, as he grabbed the back of Zolt's neck, making him look up. Placing his thumb on the triple threat leader's forehead, he positioned his pointer finger to the man's temple, as everyone watched with rapt attention, awaiting to see what was to come before the constant stream of lightning ebbed to a roar of fire, until it was snuffed out, making Amon let go of the gang leader who fell face first in a heap. Stepping back he allowed Zol to stand before he punched forward hoping for a fireball, only to get nothing, as he collapsed to the ground, as Amon announced, your firebending is gone forever. The era of bending is over, and a new era of equality has begun. The crowd cheered, as they grabbed the man who Bolin left by kicking him forward, as Naruto said. Now you all remember the plan. Bidding a nod Mako said yeah those machines are powered by water and steam while you and Korra distract them with the steam I'll grab Bolin and we duck out of here. 
nodding in satisfaction Naruto grabbed Kuro by her wrist as he gently guided her through the crowd before they entered a hallway filled with pipes and valves which the two twisted making steam spew from the sides of the pipes. Hey, what are you two doing here? They heard a familiar voice say making them turn to see the man who stood out front approaching them. Is there a problem my brother? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow. What are you two doing here? This place is restricted the large man said making Naruto give an embarrassed chuckle as he scratched the back of his head. Well you see my brother really had to go to the bathroom I tried to tell him to hold it, but he had to have had 6 cups of tea earlier before we left, I guess now he'll listen to me from now on, Naruto said with an embarrassed chuckle, making the man stare at him before looking to the steam. And the pipes? He asked making the two look, as Kor stepped forward. When we came over here my boyfriend saw they were smoking, so he was trying to cut off the flow, and prevent a problem that's the kind of man he is always so helpful she said, patting his cheek with a loving smile. I see, but why exactly is he the man started before Naruto sighed in exasperation, as he delivered a quick jab to the side of his neck, knocking him unconscious, falling to a heap. He asks too many questions now come on we need to hurry, Naruto said getting a nod from Kor, as they proceeded to twist the valves making more small streams of steam to pour out, before Naruto groaned in annoyance before he did a spin kick, hitting a pair of pipes with his metal shoes, making the tops of the pipes come off, as the room began to fill with it. I think this should be enough, Kor said getting a nod from Naruto, as the two began to bend the steam out of the hull, and into the room. With Miko. Come on Naruto, Kor they're getting there about to do bowl and Miko thought, as he squeezed between people, as he started to reach the front when the machines Naruto pointed out exploded making the room fill with steam, and the screams of the people in sight, allowing Miko to run through tossing an Ecolus who was restraining Miko off him, and off the stage. You were right. Mako asked getting a hug from his brother, as they ran out a nearby door, and down the ladder when Mako saw a shadow above him, as he saw the man with the sticks, as he stabbed them into the ladder, causing a surge of electricity to course through them, make dumping off the attacker attempted to slam the sticks into the ground, making a surge of electricity to fly around him only for Mako, and Bolin to dodge it at the last second, before Mako shot a ball of fire at the man which he dodged taking a few swings with his sticks, as he swept Mako's feet from under him, and slammed his other stick into the firebender's chest. Seeing what happened to his brother Bolin sent large chunks of earth at the attacker, which were avoided effortlessly with flips and cartwheels, before the grown man charged forward much to Bolin's terror. In an attempt to avoid the man Bolin created an earth wall which the man jumped over delivering quick blows with the sticks before jabbing Bolin, with both keeping them on him, as the earthbender spasmed before falling to the ground, as Mako slid along the side of the wall. As he spun creating an arc of fire which the attacker dodged before getting into a close range fight, before his stun baton slammed into Mako's chest, making him yell in pain before he fell to the ground. The benders need to understand that there's no place in the world for the likes of you anymore, he said before a slanted pillar of earth slammed into his chest, making him fly into the wall, as Naruto and Kor came from around the corner. You know after kidnapping our friend we imagined we could just walk away from this, and sure a long healthy chuckle after this was over, but attacking our friends. Oh see now we have a bit of a problem, Naruto said shedding his disguise along with Kora calling Naga, as Naruto picked up Bolin while she picked up Mako, as they jumped on the polar bear dog. Are they following us? Kora asked making Naruto turn to see nothing, as he held on tight to Kora's midsection, drawing a blush from the dark-skinned water tribe girl, feeling him holding on to her. Nothing's following us thank the spears for that come on we can take them to the temple Naruto said, getting a nod from the dark-haired teen, as they rode in silence. You do know we'll be chewed out by mom, and Tenzin for being out for two whole nights, and a whole day. Naruto said getting a groan from the avatar. Don't remind me she said, as they rode in silence. Air Temple Island. What do you mean you still haven't found them? Tenzin and Lin exclaimed the White Lotus members before they heard a cough from behind them, making them turn to see Naruto and Kor with deep rings under their eyes, leaning against each other to keep the other upright. At the look on the two benders any form of anger they had was replaced with worry seeing the disheveled look the two held, as Kor had bruises along her body while Naruto was covered in some, as well after he removed his armor. What happened to you two? Are you alright? Tenzin asked, as the two teens shook their heads allowing the two white lotus members that were being chewed out by the two adults to run while Naruto and Kor fell to the ground in exhaustion. Well during practice Kor and her team was told they needed 30,000 yuan to enter the tournament, and they were short, so they were looking for a way to make money skip to the drama wall and ended up going with Shady Shin he said, making Lin look at him. But the triad she exclaimed getting a positive from him, as he continued his tail drawing worried looks from the two, as he told them of Bolin being kidnapped by the Ecolists, and them looking around the city trying to find Bolin all night before coming across the first ever lead they got related to him on. So those protesters hold information that can lead to them. Tenzin said getting a positive from the others before they were then consumed with worry, when they were told how many anti-benders attended the revelation, before the story reached its climax. 
The place was filled with Kai blockers, and worse of all Mon was there, and he can take away a person's bending away for good, Kor said, making the two grown adults look at the two in surprise before Lin bust out into a laugh. That one avatar, but only avatar on could do that along with you she said, before stopping seeing the two teens with a grave expression on their faces. You serious aren't you? She asked getting a nod from the two. We saw him take away Zul's spending with our own eyes, along with the rest of the triple threats, we barely escaped with Bolin, it's dangerous trying to storm a place like that without extensive planning, and it might not be possible because of the stun we pulled, he might have come up with a different means of protection, as much, as I hate to say this. But Amon isn't some run-of-the-mill thugger gang leader. He has a cult willing to go at any means to do, as he said, and they will follow through with whatever he says Naruto said, scratching his head in exasperation. But the man he isn't going to stop until every bender be it man, woman or small child, has their bending stripped from them, as long, as the man is out there no bender is safe, Tenzin said, as the others nodded before hearing a groan come from Naruto, as he clutched his side making his mother go into protective mother mode. As she lifted her son's white shirt up slightly to see his toned stomach was covered in bruises. What happened to their son? She asked getting a groan, as he tried to stand to his feet. Well with the lack of proper sleep for nearly two whole days, and only a couple bowls of ramen from Ichirakus, I wasn't exactly mentally prepared to fight Naruto said, as he was about to fall again before Kor met his other side. Kneeling down Tenzin took a tentative touch to the young boy's chest, making him wince in pain, as he said, it seems Amon's equal has cracked a few ribs, if Kaya were here, she'd be able to help heal them, but for now your natural healing is going to have to go into overdrive. Go to sleep, and get some rest. Do you think you can bandage Kor, and Naruto up? Nodding she led the two teens to their rooms, she bandaged her son, and said son you really got to be more careful. Wincing, as she finished wrapping up her son's chest, as he said don't worry mom I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. Besides I'm a beifung I'm made of tougher stuff, and it would take more to do me in than a simple set of cracked ribs. I know it's just first I lost your father, and you're all I got left I don't know what I'd do if I lost you she said getting a chuckle from him. Well good thing we'll never have to find out huh mom. I mean really who else would cook your favorite ramen if I wasn't around. I mean yeah Ichirakus makes the best ramen in Republic City, but they can't recreate the flavors you like Naruto said yawning, as she chuckled seeing her son rub his eyes like when he was a child. Get some sleep son she said getting a nod from her son, as he yawned lying back, as she kissed his forehead before walking out of his room making her way to Kora's room, as she saw the avatar finish up her wrappings. Oh hey Lin how's Naruto? Kora asked getting a sigh from the mother, as she leaned against the doorway. He's fine. One thing I've learned about my son is that he's a workhorse, and despite being only human he spreads himself too far out. It's one of his most admirable yet troublesome traits. He could go days possibly weeks without sleep because he has obligations, and he'd feel that whatever is currently happening holds greater importance than his own safety, she said chuckling. One time he helped a few people out of a burning building, as they escaped, but he broke his leg in the process leaving him bedridden for a while. What I want to say is I'm happy you had Naruto's back. He's a good guy, and he needs people to look out for him. At first when I looked at you I thought you were a troublemaker, but now I know Naruto couldn't be in safer hands she said hugging Kor before pulling back. Thank you Kor, and get some sleep Lin said closing Kor's door, leaving a shell-shocked avatar in her bed. Now I know I'm hurt because Lin usually gives me the stink eye the avatar thought before falling back into her bed, as the events of the last two days crashed down on her forcing her to fall asleep. The end. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.